And children, come with me. Children are dismissed at this time. Follow Miss Beth out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, keep uh, Pastor Brian in prayer. He's uh, caught a little bit of a, of a bug, so he's down uh, for the day. He's on the, on the men there recouping. So just keep him in prayer that it be a speedy recovery there for Pastor Brian. But he is well. I heard he had a good nurse to take care of him, Miss Beth. So she put up with him. You know, the man cold is very severe sometimes. So praise God. So this morning, I, I, how many know when we come to a new year, for me, it's always like the beginning. It's a, it's a new start. And so I titled today's message, A Fresh Start. How many could use a fresh start from last year? Um, we could use a fresh start. And so that's why I titled this message today, A Fresh Start. And so I'm just thinking about that. And you know what? Every day with God is a, is a new beginning. Every day that we got the ability to walk with the Lord and reach out and call to him, it is a fresh start for you and I. And so I, during this beginning of the year, we always, for myself, I always take the time to start doing inventory. Inventory of my life. What's going on in my life? Where where maybe I need to tighten up some things, maybe I, I've lacked in some areas, maybe there's something God was trying to do in my life that maybe I hindered it in some way, but it's always a time to refocus the beginning of the year, and so a, a fresh start. Now, I believe we, all know, we can all use a fresh start every once in a while, and so I want to go to the first scripture on your outline this morning, which is Isaiah 43, 18, and 19. This is the NLT, and it reads like this, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I, am going to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The NIV translates that first verse like this. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. I mean, no, sometimes we have issues with dwelling on the past. Sometimes we can have issues on, on thinking about what's behind us. And sometimes when we get caught up in what's behind us, we're not able to move forward. How many know what Christ is? He calls us to follow him. So we're always moving with God, following Christ into something new. The word of God says that he's doing something new. It also says that forget about those. He goes, but forget all that. Forget about what's in the past. Forget about what he's done in the past. How many know God's done some great things in our past, in our life, right? He's done some good deliverance. He's healed. He's restored. He's renewed. But he says, in comparison to what is what I'm about to do, what is already started to begun to do, the new thing that I'm doing, it can't compare it to the old thing. The old thing can't compare it to the new thing that I'm doing in your life. And so a fresh start is with, always starts with God. One of those things that we have to do is, is forget those things that are behind us because it can't compare to what God is doing here and now. My question to you this morning is, can you see it? Can you see what God is doing in your life right now? Are we paying attention to what the Lord is doing in our life? The new thing that he has started, the new work that he's already begun in our lives, can we see what it is and what he's doing? Do we see his hand in our life? He says that he's already begun. So let me ask this. Are there some barren areas in our life? Are there some areas in our life, looking at from this past year that we just now coming into a new year, are there some areas in our life that are laid waste? Are there some areas in our life that are, are barren and unproductive and unfruitful and, and, and not producing any good fruit in our lives? Have some things died off that maybe at one time we were healthy and doing things according to the word of God and according to his purpose, have some things of maybe gone awry in our lives? Are they barren? I would say that we need to allow God to water us. How many know where water is at? Where water is flowing, there is life. You go to the river, you go to streams, and you see water, there is life. You see trees and plants and vegetation. How many know where water is at, there is life? And maybe there's some things in our life that God needs to begin to water again so that he can supply us with refreshment in this new season. How many need to be refreshed this morning? How many of us got beat up this last year, gone through some things, took some punches, <laughs> got the wind knocked out of us, you know, done some, you encountered some things. How many know this life of Christ is not always cakes and pies, but we encounter some, some trials and tough times, some things that challenge our lives, right? And that's why we need God to water. It says that he will make he will make a pathway through the wilderness. In other words, he'll, he'll make a pathway where it seems like there's no way that God can do something here. You look at your life and you say, there's no way. This is wasteland. This is wilderness. This is, this is, there's nothing could be done with this part of my life. But how many know when you add God into the equation, things change? 
He says, I can make a pathway through the wilderness. He says, I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Those things that are wasted away and look like there's nothing could become fruitful out of that area of your life. God can produce something there. Forget the former things. God is doing something new today. But can you see it? Do you perceive it? So number one, if you write this down in your outline, jot this down. Let go of the past and look to the future. Let go of the past and look to the future. I mean, no, we have a future with Christ. There's hope in God. And it's those things from the past a lot of times that hold us back. You might have encountered some disruption in your life. Anybody encountered disruption in their life? I know a flat tire could throw your whole day off. (laughs) Come outside, it's raining, you got a flat tire, that's a disruption in your life. But how many know there's some more serious things that in this last year that maybe you've encountered that disrupted your life? You had plans, you had things, you wanted to do things a certain way, but there's a disruption that comes and was challenging. Maybe disappointment. Anybody have any shattered expectations? You're expecting things to work out a certain way and something happened where, you know what, it shattered your expectations. And disappointment sets in. Maybe you're waiting for an answer from God and there's this delay. Anybody have a delayed answer from God and you just start freaking out? (laughs) I'm the only one, huh? (laughs) God, I've been praying, I've been fasting, Lord, and Sometimes it's a, it's a wait. You got to wait sometimes. Discouragement. How many of you have been discouraged over this past year? You've gone through some things and just, you know what, you just, some heavy discouragement is, is set upon you. Well, it's time to move forward into a new season. It's time to look at Christ and set our eyes on him and focus and lean into the Lord and, and know that it's a new season, that God is doing something new, something fresh in our lives if we allow him. So we got to let go of the past and look to the future. Let's look at what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. And he says this. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. So how do we get through? How do we let go of that stuff? How do we let go of what's behind us? How do we you know, shake it off and don't let it become weights and hold us back from running this race that God has called us to? How do we do that? Paul says he boils everything down to following Christ and pursuing Jesus to this one thing. He says, I forget what's behind me. I look to what's ahead. Do you know that God has a plan for you? Do you know that God has a purpose for you? We know that those things are good. And even some of the past victories and defeats and disappointments, we got to let go You can't live off yesterday's victory. God is trying to do something new in your life today. And so Paul says he boils it down to following Christ. He says, I haven't apprehended it. I haven't laid hold of it. I haven't achieved it. My Christ-likeness, I'm not where I want to be. But one thing I do is I'm striving. I'm pushing. I'm, I'm looking for. I'm pressing on and reaching with all that I have to do the race that God has called me to do and receive what God has for me. Paul reduced it down to that one thing, and it was forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. So that we could run our race well. And that one day, that prize, that we'll be home with the Lord. We're striving for that. We're striving that one day we're going to be home with the Lord. But as we're running our race, guess what? We're trying to take as many with us as we can, aren't we? We're trying to take as many people with us as we can. How many know the day draws near that the Lord is coming back? And so we know that the time is short. And so we have a mission. We have something to do. God has called us to do something. Bring as many people with us as we can into the kingdom of God. But if we're set on things behind us, we're not paying attention. We're distracted. That's what Paul said. I'm not going to let anything distract me from what I have to do. And that is I'm pursuing Christ. Nothing's going to distract me. How many are easily distracted in their walk with God? The shiny things, right? (laughs) New cars, new house. The white fence, <laughs> picket white fence, all the shiny stuff. We get distracted. Those things are not bad in themselves, but when they become your focus in life and Christ becomes secondary, then we're out of order and our priorities have shifted. Seek him first, right? Everything else be added unto you. In Proverbs 4, 25 and 27 says this. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before him. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. 
How many know where your eyes are focused on, what you set your sights on, is where you're going to be led? Whatever you put your eyes on. If your eyes are on, on advancing in the workplace, if your eyes are advancing, getting you the better things, the shiny things, those different things that just distract us at times, then that's where you're going to find yourself, is following after those things. Why? Because our eyes are set on those things. The proverb says, fix your eyes, fix your gaze, fix your focus on what's ahead of you, what's straight ahead. Don't get distracted to your left or to your right. And be steadfast in all your ways. How many people have been doing hokey pokey all year? You put your right foot in, put your right foot out, you shake it all about. We've been playing around. And we get distracted. We're, we're following God and we're on hot pursuit of following Jesus. And then something happens and we get distracted. And there we go. Our path shifts. We're on a path that God has set us on. And our focus is to be on him. Our gaze and our focus are fixing our eyes on him. That we would give careful thought. Give careful thought to the path that you take this year. How many know whatever path you take is going gonna, gonna to lead you somewhere? It's a path. It's going to lead you somewhere. Where are you headed this morning? Where are you headed this morning? Is it to where God is sending you, where God is telling you to go, or is this what you want to do? I mean, that's always the struggle, right? That's always the battle. What I want to do, I want to stay home and cut on the blankets with sweats on. <laughs> God said, no, you got to go. You got to preach today. <laughs> I was going to call in sick. <laughs> Pastor beat me. Nah. <laughs> where is the path leading you to? What path have you taken? Two roads, the wide and the narrow. That wide road is always disguised, and sometimes it looks good on that wide road, but we know that it leads to destruction at the end. The narrow road leads to life. But how many know when you walk that narrow path, you can't take everything with you? And sometimes it's a sacrifice. So take careful thought to the path that you take this year. It's the beginning of the year. It's a new time. It's a new season. You get it. You know, if you've been off, if you've drifted, if, you, if we've gone, you know, this way or that way, left or right, it's time we can refocus. And we can fix our eyes on the Lord. And we begin to say, you know what, let's, let's do this right. Let's do it the way God wants to do it. And I'm speaking to myself because I preach this to myself first. Checking inventory and looking at my life. I don't want to be halfway in, halfway out. It's all or nothing. Put it all in red, right? <laughs> the blood of Jesus. Isaiah 41 and 10 says this, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. How many know when we're trying to shake the past or we're trying to leave it behind us when we're dealing with those things, with the past, how many know sometimes fear can set in? Because things that we've experienced, things that we're going through, things that are happening in our life that are very real, fear can set in. Or how about even the future? When we, want to, when we talk about our future, we're like, we don't know what's in store for us. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what God is doing sometimes. We can't see him. But that's when we walk by faith and not by sight. He says, do not fear. Do not fear, church. He says, I am with you. The God of this universe, he says, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. It's personal. It's not grandma's God. It's not your tia's God. It's your God. He's your God. And that's the way it should be that, you know what, I don't have to fear because he's with me. Whatever I got to face, whatever I have to go through, it's a new season, new year. There's things that I don't know what lies ahead, but I know that God is with me. Why? Because he's told me so. When I'm weak, he will strengthen me. And when I can't go any further and I feel like I can't make it, guess what? He says, my righteous right hand will uphold you. Anybody ever been there this past year where you just feel like, man, I can't take another step? I got things coming from the left, from the right. I'm being bombarded by the enemy. I just, I can't do it. He says, I will give you strength. I am your strength. I will uphold you when you can't walk anymore and you can't do it. Lean into me. I mean, no, there's no other place so secure like the hand of God. Being in the hand of God. He says, I got you. I got you. But, but Lord, you don't know what I'm going through. Yeah, he does. But God, you don't understand my marriage, my kids, my this, my that. No, I got you. 
But what happens is we panic in those times and we take off and we do it our own way. We take a different path. Now you just got to stay put in our Father's hand. It's the most secure place for the believers in the hands of God. He's our help, he's our protector, and he's our refuge. You know what a refuge is? It's a picture of someone going to a cliff with the storm and all the elements coming out, coming around him, and you're tucked back in a cave and nothing can touch you. You're just surrounded by, by, by rock. He's our place of refuge. Number two, if you write this down, we have hope for our future. We have hope for our future. I've been there where hopeless situations, dark days, dark times, but he's always been my shelter. When I feel that way, the Lord has always been my shelter, always been my refuge, always been my place of safety. Jeremiah 29, 11 and 13 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. God is not here to destroy us. God's plans for us are good. Even though this world is not good, there's things that happen to us that are not good. I mean, God can even work through those things in our life to produce good. Has anybody been there where you're going through life and you know what? Things are not good. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't taste good. It doesn't look good. But God somehow, some way makes a way. And it becomes beneficial to you and to his glory. His plans are good for us. His plans are to give us a future and a hope. There's two things that I want to pull out from that Jeremiah 29, 11, and 13. Leonard Ravenhill said this. He said, a person is only as strong in the Lord as their prayer life. He says, if you pray, I will listen. God, that's God's promise. If you pray, if you pray to me, I will listen to you. Then Ray Ray said, you're only as strong as your prayer life. So I asked myself, how, what does my prayer life look like? What is my, if I, that's the measure of my strength. What is my strength like? Because even as a minister of the gospel, we're always laying hands on people and praying for other people. But what's my intimate prayer life with him look like? It's always going out this way, but just with him. Do I sit there? Do I admire him? Do I adore him? Do I sit in silence with him? Is it not just Jimmy, Jimmy, my name is Jimmy, gimme, gimme? With a handout. It's a relational thing. And how many know there's power in prayer? God's church would just get back. We just get back to praying and getting hold of the Lord to see him shake up our land. Shake up those things that need to be shooken up in our lives. Power in prayer. And he promises that he will listen. How awesome is that, that we pray to a God of the universe who created all things and that he's willing to come and listen and stoop down and listen to his ear. What is man that he would think of us? He says, look. In other words, seek. In other words, pursue. In other words, come after. You know, like when you were dating and you went after your wife, you know how you pursue her, man, flowers, candy, open the door. You just seek, you pursue, you're pursuing her. Or maybe it was the other way around. The wife was pursuing you. Maybe you were Brother Feedman. I don't know. (laughs) Mr. Man. But he says, when you look wholeheartedly, you will find me. I've heard so many times people say, well, I wish I could see God. I wish I would know God. Well, all you have to do is seek him. His promise is that if you seek him, you will find him. With all that you got, your wholeheartedness, all that you are, seeking after him with a love, with the admiration, with a, with, a, with a yearning for the living God. If you will seek him with all that you have, he says, you will find me. But I can't hear you, God. I don't feel you, God. Seek him with all that you got. Wholeheartedly seek him and you will find him. Romans 5, 3 and 5 says, We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strengthen of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. I mean, nothing that we go through is wasted when we're serving God. Not any of your struggles, not any of your tears, nothing that you go through is wasted with God. 
Like I said, even out of the things that we encounter, those hardships that we encounter, God can produce something good from it. The hope of salvation that will not bring disappointment. In other words, our hope in Christ that even though we go through hard times in this life, we know that we have a salvation that is dear and that you can't put a price on it. Paul says, for we know how dearly God loves us. Do you know how much God loves you? Do you truly understand how much God loves you? That he's given us a deposit, his very spirit, to indwell in us. These jars of clay with a treasure inside, which is God. And a deposit, in other words, a guarantee that he, we have an inheritance coming, that he's going to come back for us, and he's given us a deposit for now. So that we may understand in our hearts how much he loves us. He uses the very problems and trials that we encounter and make it produce hope inside of us. 1 Peter 5.10 And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. As we walk toward our future in God, sometimes we encounter pain in the present day, don't we? Has anybody encountered some some pain this past year? But even through that suffering, even though we, have, we suffer attack or we suffer illness, we suffer different things, though the enemy tries to attack us on the other side of that coin, God is producing something in us. That as the enemy attacks us or we go through trials or tribulations, that, that God is working in us to perfect us and bring us to a place of maturity. That even though we're going through those hard things, God is doing something on the other side. If we allow the process... And walk through that. Ephesians 1, 18 and 19. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. In order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. And his uncomparably great power for us who believe that, believe that power is the same as the mighty strength. Paul was praying for the Ephesian church saying that, he, that they would spiritually their minds would be enlightened and that they would understand and appreciate the hope and the inheritance they have in Christ. I mean, we are all called to live a life for Jesus of obedience. And that as we walk and we live that life, that we have a hope and an inheritance that is in Christ Jesus. And Paul was saying, I hope you understand this. I hope you get this. That as we're walking through this life, we have the hope and the inheritance that is in Christ Jesus. He goes on to speak about the power, the power that is available to you and I as a believer. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave is the same power that dwells in you. But how do you know sometimes we walk around like that, that donkey? What's his name? Eeyore? Woe is me, just another day, serving Jesus, trying to make it. There is a power that is available to us that we can walk in victory no matter what we face, no matter how relentless the enemy's attack is on us, that we have a power that is inside of us that we would just use it to overcome and be victorious in Christ. That same spirit, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, the same power that resides in us. So number three, if you write this down, strengthen yourself for the future God has for you. Strengthen yourself for the future God has for you. Second Timothy 1 and 7 says this, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And we know that we do encounter things in this life, threats, trials, different things, but God hasn't given us a spirit of fear so that we have to reside back or we, we stop or we get, how I many know sometimes when fear hits you that you can just become crippled at times. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but that of power. In other words, he's given us every spiritual resource that we need to take on any trial or any threat that we are faced with. He says, I have given you power. He says, he's given us love, love that is set on pleasing him. My love, everything that I have, the love that I know is to, to seek the Lord and put my eyes on him and to follow him and to please him and also a love for a people who are the least the last and the lost that I would go out there and reach them be the hands and the feet of Jesus 
in these dark days and be a light to the world. That's what you and I are called to do. That type of love that he's filled us with, to love a stranger. How many know before Christ, you wouldn't even open the door for people? <laughs> Pull over on the side of the road, forget it. Hand somebody your money, no, that's out the, that's out the picture. But God has given us such a love that, you know, what? we want to see people's well-being. We want them to know the love of God and the love of Christ. And a sound mind. In other words, we're able to live a disciplined, a disciplined life with self-control and with confidence to walk out this walk that God has called us to. 2 Thessalonians 3, 3 says this. But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. How many know that you become dangerous to the enemy when you walk in confidence of the Lord? You're not scared of him coming after you or destroying your home, but if he's going to come, he's got a fight on his hands. He's not going to take my family. He's not going to take my kids. He's not going to take my neighbors. He's not going to take my city. These things belong to the Lord, and we're going to fight for it. We're going to war for it. You're not just going to come here and punk me and take things from me, devil. Because how many know we know what that life is like before Christ? Where he snatched everything from you. You're leaving blind and in the dark. He said God is faithful. How many know that he's faithful to his promises? If God said he's going to do it, he will do it. It will come to completion. He will strengthen you and also he will protect you from the enemy of your soul. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You don't have to be afraid, church. Your God, the one who created everything you see, the one who raises the dead, the one that heals with miracles, that God is with you wherever you go. Be strong and be courageous in this new season that God is bringing you into. And number four, if you write this down, Look to Jesus with expectation. Look to Jesus with expectation. Not just with our hands out for a blessing, but Jesus, what do you want me to do this year? If this is your home, if this is where you call home, your home church, we all have a part here. We're a body and each one does its part. So would you ask the Lord, Lord, what, where do I play my part in this place, in this, this house, in this body of believers? Ask the Lord, where, where is it that he is calling you to? What is your ministry? Where or can you be more, more effective, the most effective for his glory and for his honor? What is it, God? What new thing are you doing in my life? And God, help me to see it. Because how many know he's doing something? God is up to something. God is doing something, but it's a matter of whether we're going to be a part of it. God, give me eyes to see what you're doing and a heart to respond so that I can be a part of it. Galatians 6, 9 says this, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. If you've been in the trenches this past year, if you've been fighting and you're just, man, you're out almost out of gas, don't give up, church. Don't give up, because in due season you'll reap a harvest. Don't give up in doing what is good, what is well, what the Lord has called you to do. You keep fighting the good fight and know that there will be, God's timing is perfect. It might take you to that line, but he's always on time. Jeremy, would you come up real quick? A tradition that we do every year is you see a tree with the balloons on there. We put scriptures in there, and what we do is we take a balloon with that scripture, and we let it be a part of our life for this new coming year. So we're going to go ahead and start with this end over here, that far end. If you want to come, if you would like a scripture, you can go ahead and pull a balloon. There's some pins in there. We'll do another New Year's. We'll start popping those balloons. So we'll start with this end. Go ahead. You guys want to start, get yourself a balloon if you would like a scripture. There's pins in the basket there. You can go ahead and pop it, put the pin back when you're done. We'll set it off in here. There we go. And then you get, next, you can just follow suit after them. The last scripture on your outlines is Proverbs 19.21. It says, many are the plans in a person's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. We may have a lot of plans in our heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails over all things. So I would say set your eyes on him this new coming year. Know that there's a fresh start with them. 
come to him with expectation that he's going to do something in you and through you this year. As they're getting their balloons, I'm just going to go ahead and say a prayer over us as we come to a closing this morning. And Father, I just want to lift up your people this, this morning, Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, I pray that we can leave the things in the past behind us, Lord God, that we can come into this new year and new season with you, Lord. That God, you've given us a hope and a future. We pray for your strength, Lord God, for that future you do have for us, Lord. That as we come to you, let us come with expectation, Lord Jesus, seeking you. Not in only what we can have or what we can get, Lord, but what can we do for you as your body, Lord? What is it that you ask of us, Lord God? What is it that you are calling us to do and to be? Would you give us eyes that are open, ears that can hear your voice? Our great shepherd. We're seeking you this year, Lord. We ask for a deeper intimate relationship with you as we draw near, Lord God, that you would draw near to us. We pray for healing, Lord God, in marriages and in families, Lord. We pray for the prodigals to come back home, Lord God. For our children that are wayward, Lord, that you would just reach them and touch them, Lord. If we can't, Lord God, that you would send somebody to them and give them the gospel, Lord, that they would turn to you and be saved, O oh Lord. We pray, Lord God, for those who are sick in body, Jesus. Those who are dealing with physical conditions, Lord God, that you would bring healing and restoration and make them whole inside your very presence, oh God. We pray for miracles, Lord God, that we would see, Lord God, people saved and delivered, healed this coming year, Jesus. That we as your church, as this local assembly here, Lord God, would be your hands and your feet, Lord. That we would reach out to the least, the last, and the lost, Lord God, with your love. That we would touch lives, Lord, and see people change and on their way to heaven, Lord God. We pray for those who are in doubt, those who are struggling, Lord, in their, in their walk with you, Lord, that you would just speak to them in a special way, Lord God. Touch their lives, their hearts, their minds, their bodies, Lord. We ask that we be used of you, Lord. Surely there is a work for us, Lord God, to do. That we know we're not saved by works, Lord, but we work because we're saved, Father God, that we are in, with gratitude and thankfulness that you are doing and you have done things in our life that nobody else can do, Lord. And so with that, we want to serve you, Lord, wholeheartedly. And I just pray, Lord God, for those unspoken requests in the heart of your people today, Jesus. Those things that only you and the individual knows, Lord God, I pray you're you would speak to them in such a way and reveal to them, Lord God, reveal to them who you are, what you want, what you desire, that you love each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord. We pray that your people would rise up, Lord God, in this time, in this day, to be your hands and your feet, to be your church outside the walls, Lord God. May you give us revelation, May we walk in your power. And may your spirit lead us, Lord God. We thank you for all that you're doing, all that you have done, and all that you would do in this new season, Father. To you be the glory and honor. In Jesus' name. song for dismissal so if you would just stand with us as we sing this last song out if you haven't got your balloons already